guys, welcome back to another episode of Creative Process. Today we're gonna be working on under graphic design concept. In today's tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create a folding ribbon effect inside Illustrator. We'll be using some new tools that will make our workflow much faster. It's under great technique that can be useful for your other projects. So let's begin with designing process. Open a new Illustrator document. First, we'll create this dual folded ribbon. So Select the rectangle tool and draw the rectangle. After that, fill it up with a blue color using the color swatches. And remove the stroke color. Next, scale it down a little bit and then go to object, envelope distort and click on make with mesh. In this panel, keep the rows and columns 2x2 two two, and then click OK. Next, using the dice selection tool, start adjusting the anchor points to get the edge shape. Also, edge the handles to give us smooth curves. After that, select the bottom anchor points and drag it toward the left side. Next, edge the handles to modify the shape and to maintain the smooth flow. So here is our first shape. Next, we're gonna be creating the other two shapes in the same way. So select the rectangle tool and create out under rectangle. Then go to object, envelope distort and apply make with mesh and set two rows and two columns. Now using the dice selection tool, edge the points as per the required shape. Then edge the handles in order to maintain the flow of the previous shape. This way, we'll continue tweaking the anchor points and get our shape. Now repeat the same process with the top anchor points and set the shape. Next, create one more rectangle with the rectangle tool and repeat the same process like we did with both the previous shapes. After that, arrange the first shape to front and then have a look at the merging points of each shape and adjust that. In the next step, Select the line segment tool and create a line. Then apply the stroke color and set the stroke thickness to around 3 points. And take a copy aside by pressing the alt key and increase the stroke size. Next open the symbol panel and drag the second line into that panel. Then give a name to that symbol. Now repeat the same process for the other line too. Now we can delete these lines. Next, create a box with the rectangle tool. Disable the stroke and fill it up with light gray color. After that, drag the line symbol from the symbol panel and set it according to the size of the rectangle. Then by pressing Alt key, make a copy and then press Command or Ctrl D to create multiple number of copies. Next. Make a copy of the rectangle by pressing the ALT key and then drag the thick line symbol from the symbol panel and adjust it according to the size of the rectangle. Now again press the ALT key and make a copy. After that press command or control D for multiple copies. Then select both the shapes and press control G to group them. In the next step take a copy of the thick line pattern and place it on the first shape. After that select the shape and send it to back. Now select both the shapes and go to object, envelope distort and click on make with top object. This will automatically apply the pattern to our S shape following the curve flow without adjusting. In the same way make a copy of the thin line pattern and place it over the second shape. Then send it to back. After that, select both the shapes and go to object, envelope distort and click on make with top object. Now repeat the same process for the third shape with a thick pattern. And then send the third shape to back. Here we can see that lines are applied in a zigzag way. So to fix these lines, pick the dice selection tool and adjust the flow with the help of handles. Check the curves of the shape, whether they are maintaining the flow or the folding effect. 
After that, keep the design aside and create a rectangle with a rectangle tool. Then go to object, envelope distort and click on make with mesh. Set two rows and two columns in the panel and click OK. Now pick the die selection tool and edge the top anchor points with the handles to give a smooth curvy shape. Then take a copy and click on mirror tool and click OK. Next rotate the copy to merge it with the curve shape and set the angle of rotation. After that take the thick line pattern and place it on the front shape. Now select both the shapes and go to object, envelope distort and click on make with top object. Here sometime we could get zigzag shape with the lines. So to fix that, edge the handles using the die selection tool. Then edge the flow of the second shape according to the front one. Next take the thin line pattern and repeat the same process to fix the lines in that shape. After that place both the shapes on the artboard. Now we'll add shadows to the shape. So to add that create a duplicate of the S shape on top and go to object. Click on the release in the envelope distort. Then we can see the separated shape and the pattern. So delete the pattern and select the shape. We cannot apply gradient to the mesh shape. So go to object path and click on offset path. In that panel keep the offset value 0 and click OK. This will create an outline shape. Now delete the mesh shape and select the shape with the outline. Apply gradient color to that shape. Then edge the sliders and change the blending mode to multiply. Now set the angular rotation of the gradient according to the shape and edge the sliders. Next, decrease the opacity to change it into lighter color. After that, repeat the same process for the third shape and pick the same gradient color from the previous shape using the eyedropper tool. Then delete the left slider and edge the gradient from darker to lighter color. Next, increase the opacity now to give a feel of depth in the shadow. Now repeat the same process for the middle shape and pick the same gradient color tool using the eyedropper tool. Then edge the angle where we need shadows on the shape. After that, go on with the same process for the second shape and edge the gradient angle up to the shadow area on the shape. Next open Photoshop and take a new document. Then drag the shapes from Illustrator to Photoshop. Now scale both the shapes according to our requirement. And then double click on the bottom layer and set a color overlay on the layer style panel. Here give light cream color. Next select both the vector shapes and create a copy. Then rename the layers as shadow1 and shadow. After that double click on the shadow layer. This will open the layer style panel. Here apply color overlay. Choose violet color for the shadow part. Now to apply the same effect to the second shadow layer, press the alt key and drag the effect to the shadow1 layer. This will give a same color tone. Next select the layer one by one and right click. Then click on the rasterize layer and then rasterize layer style. This will convert both the layer to rasterize image. Now select the shadow1 layer and press on command or control T and then right click and select wrap option. Now drag the shape to add a drop shadow. Now repeat the same process for the second shadow layer too. Using the wrap option we can modify any shape. After that go to filter, blur and select Gaussian blur. Set the blur value to around 19 and click OK. Next change the blending mode to multiply and then go to image adjustment and select curves. Here edge the curve to give darker tone and decrease the opacity level. Now press the shortcut key E for eraser and erase the unwanted shadow region. 
Next, repeat the same shadow blur process for the other shape with the suitable values and the opacity levels. Then apply some hue and saturation to bring some color variation in the shadows. After that, select the elliptical marker tool and create a circle with a light brownish fill color. Then take a copy of this circle and decrease the size. Now select the first circle and go to layer style. In that, apply drop shadow and edge the angle, distance, size and opacity. After that, select the bigger circle and go to filter and add some little noise on that. Next, adjust some brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Then in hue and saturation adjustment layer, switch on colorize and then adjust some colors. Next, decrease the opacity of the color. In the next step, take a new layer and rename it highlight. After that, change the blending mode into linear dodge. Then choose a light cream color using the color picker panel. Now to apply the highlights only to your design, we'll make a selection of the region. So click on the thumbnail of the smart object layer by pressing the control key and then start applying the brush strokes where you want to add highlights. After that, make a selection of the other ribbon area by clicking on the thumbnail and apply the highlights. Now clip the hue and saturation adjustment layer to the smart object with the alt pressed. Then Make a copy of it for the down layer by pressing the ALT key. Then with the ALT pressed, clip the layer to the second ribbon shape. After that, drag the shadow on layer below the second vector shape. Then select the three layers and scale up the size. Move the small circle a little bit aside. Then after adjusting everything, now press T for the type tool and type out some text like fold. And now. Scale the size and apply a suitable color. Next, set the font style for the text and edge the placement. Here in case, if you want to change the color of the ribbon, then double click on the smart object and it will open in illustrator. And then select the shape and go to object, envelope distort and click on release. Then select the line pattern and ungroup it. Now select the box shape and apply some orange color. Here you can choose any color. Then select both the shapes and go to object and web distort and click on make with top object so that we can get our color on the shape including the patterns. Now go to file and save the work. And hence it will be updated automatically in the Photoshop file. Now select the first vector shape and repeat the same process. Change its color. And save it and it's updated in the Photoshop. Finally, we have completed creating a folding ribbon effect inside Illustrator. We have used some new techniques and tools that have reduced our work time. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check out the next tutorial coming up. And if you want more updates on designing, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.